the power and the pitfalls of visualization and vision boards. Okay, so for anyone who's been on one of my programs before, uh, or you've heard me talk, um, or just know me well, um, I always need the science behind something. Um, so everything I do is really based on kind of practical considerations and evidence based research over sort of like wishy washy life advice and positive fluff, you know, positivity has its place, absolutely. Um, but it needs some substance behind it, right? Um, but I equally love the art, uh, the creativity, the creation, the crafting, the idea of crafting our lives, um, knowing that we have the power, right? The capability and resources to shape the life we want by design, not default. Um, so we're going to create a vision board of our intentions for the month, but we're going to do it in a slightly different way to what you might have seen before. And we're going to do it with science in mind. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the power of visualization. And I'm going to talk about the pitfalls. Um, now, Stovey, Stephen Covey right, um, wrote in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's an incredible book for anyone who wants to start working smarter and build better relationships. It really is um, one of uh, a very profound, uh, had a profound impact on my life. Um, and he says that in order to be effective, we must begin with the end in mind, right? So he explains that all things are created twice. There is a mental creation, so a vision that we create, our, we use our imagination, and then that transforms into a physical creation. Now, to successfully create the physical, we must first leverage the power of the imagined, okay? So just like architects will visualize and imagine, you know, how a building will look against a skyline and then design it, Stevens thought process is that so too can we visualize and design how we want to um, our lives to be. Now visual visualization isn't anything new or profound, okay? There, there is tons of research on athletes using this technique of visualization to improve their performance, allowing them to achieve things that we never thought possible for the human body to do. Um, so this is just one example. A study looked at the brain patterns of weightlifters um, and they found that the same patterns activated when a weightlifter lifted 100 pounds as to when they only imagine lifting. So pro athletes have already been doing this, right? They use visual mental imagery to up their game. Um, now, seasoned athletes will use more than just the imagery, right? They use vivid, highly detailed internal images and they use their bodies and their emotions and they run through an entire performance to engage all of their senses um, in this sort of like mental rehearsal. Um, so world champion golfer, um, he said, I never hit a shot, not even in practice without having a very sharp in focus picture of it in my head. Um, and heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali um, used different mental practices to enhance his performance and affirmations um, like I am the greatest. Right. There are some really powerful mantras um, for personal worth. Um, so why aren't we using this? If athletes have been doing this for God knows how long. Why are we not? Um, now, the problem for most of us, I think, is that we limit ourselves to only what we've seen. And therefore, we'll only ever have what we've always gotten, right? We have to use our boundless imagination to dream beyond what we know. And we have to create a mental image first. So it's almost like giving your brain instructions in order con to conceptualize and create it. Now, what if we think of our brains, our brains, especially our subconscious, our brains are like a sponge, right? Information um, is being soaked up even when we don't know it. And to some extent, it can be polluted by years of conditioning and training, right? As women, particularly, we're supposed to act, be and do certain things. Um, what happens is we become attached to labels and job titles that institutions or the media or people like teachers or, you know, parents or family members, um, they attach these labels to us. 
And sometimes we become attached to those as part of our identities without even allowing our minds to go beyond the confines of that box, right? We've been placed into because it's scary and it's unknown and our brains are designed to resist anything that's unknown. Now, that's a whole nother conversation and we can we can touch on that in a different um, in a different uh, coffee chat. Um, but in order to go beyond our conditioning of what we've been told we are capable of um, and start to stretch outside of that, the confines of that box to test our own potential. OK, we have to activate our imaginations. So I love this quote. It's one of my favorite ones. What do you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Um, so there are hundreds of ways we can use vision boards, um, but I have a big problem with the majority of them. Now, generally, I found that vision boards are done in a way that only captures the what, right? So mainly popularized by um, the book, The Secret. Um, and it was a book endorsed by um, Oprah. So um, that helped a lot. Um, now, the, the Secret's basic premise was the idea that your mode of thinking directly affects what the universe gives you, right? So if you put positive mental energy into the universe, you'll be the recipient of positive outcomes. Um, now, this is the law of attraction, right? And it's not new. Um, it was around before the secret. There was, you know, varying variations of the creative visualization. Um, but generally, the theory taught that um, the law of attraction is universal and it always works if you do it correctly, right? So the reason they, the, the, the lesson taught is that the reason for any unrealized goals, if you don't meet your goals under this premise, um, it's simply because you didn't provide enough positive thoughts and energy to the process um, and you let some ne negative thoughts slip in, right? So in short, it's pretty much saying you're completely to blame for your lack of success. Now, the idea I think is in, in practice is that you simply need to ensure that this visualization that you've created, whether it's represented by a vision board or another way, is repeatedly in your field of vision. And as long as that's the case, everything will be lovely and dandy. Now, <laughs> um, there's some, <laughs> I, I struggle with the lack of science behind it, but there are some, there are some, um, uh, there are some elements of that that I completely agree with and there's some science behind it, right? So cutting out pictures and writing down positive affirmations can be beneficial, definitely, right? It can help us organize and more clearly identify um, what our goals actually are. Um, but leaving it at that and just like throwing up positive thoughts at a board in a hope that it will come true, personally, I'm not so sold on it. Um, there's a fundamental piece missing for me, and that's action, okay? And here's what the research tells us. So just one by um, Pham and Taylor at the University of California, um, they found that students who just visualized getting a good grade, right? So all they did was this kind of secret version. They just visualized getting a good grade. Though they felt better about themselves, they achieved less than a group that were asked to visualize when, where, and how they intended to study in order to get that good grade. So what this research and, and a few others show is that visualizing the how, the process is more important. It gives us that motivation, that momentum to act to take action on the goals that we want to achieve. Um, and a similar study by them showed similar results with go golfers and tennis players. Um, and they were more successful if they imagined themselves training um, over just winning the prize. OK, so my other issue with the secret version of vision boarding um, is that the self blame element of it that is it, that is then placed on the person simply for not visualizing in the right way, right? And so therefore you're an automatic failure. Um, but it's my belief personally that, you know, the universe may have other plans for us, right? Sometimes not achieving our goals as we first thought of them may actually benefit us, right? I have hundreds of examples of working towards um, a certain goal failed and then something else presented itself that if I'd been successful in the original goal that I had, the specifics of that, I really doubt I would have opened myself up to even consider 
that even if it was presented to me, this other opportunity. Um, so in my view, rather than self-blame, rather than it being about you not having put out the positive vibes in the right way, um, I think that time would be better spent looking at learnings, changing course and moving on to better things. Um, so in my mind, ideas, thoughts and dreams are great. And our, our brains are there, that our imagination is a tool for us to, to use if we use it in the right way. Um, but they are forms of energy that do not necessarily lead to anything substantial for me, right? Um, which for me is all about action. So the how, the process is an important part of visualization.